Hey, what's up you guys, it's Connor, and today I'm going to be doing a book review on The Schwa Was Here by Neil Schusterman. One thing before we get started with anything was that I was so surprised that this book is actually signed. I think I ordered this book from Thrift Books, and it came signed. So that was crazy. It's also signed to Candace, which I hope Candace is doing okay because this smells like cigarette smoke, and I hate that. So if any of you guys know how to get rid of cigarette smoke in books, let me know because I was hating the smell of this book while reading it. <laughs> if you guys don't know, Neil Schusterman is one of my favorite YA authors. I've read a ton of books by him and have really enjoyed all of them. I haven't done individual reviews of all of them, but now that I've decided I want to, I'm gonna go back and reread them all. One that I hadn't ever read before was The Schwa Was Here, which was, really no? One that I hadn't read before was The Schwa Was Here, which was one of his really popular books that came out, I think, in 2004. And I wanted to read it. <laughs> if you guys don't know, The Schwa Was Here follows this boy named Ansi. It's the first book in the Ansi Bonanno series. Ansi's real name is Anthony, but because he lives in Brooklyn, his name got shortened to Anthony and then it got changed to Ansi for some reason. <laughs> it follows him as he's going to school in Brooklyn, living with his family. He has an older brother and a younger sister. Within his family, he's not the most outstanding member. He doesn't get the best of grades. He's not the baby of the family. He, he doesn't really have all that much that brings attention to him. So he's kind of forgettable in his own family unit. At the beginning of the book, he and his friends are trying to destroy this plastic dummy, this mannequin that his father invented for the company that he works for, which is some plastic company. And they find out that there is a guy that's at his school that is in his class that everyone just tends to forget about. Calvin Schwa has the Schwa effect, which basically means that he is invisible-ish. They describe it as observationally challenged. He can be in a room and people just don't notice him and don't see him and don't remember him. Ansi decides that he is going to do little experiments with Schwa and figure out why people can't see him and what the deal is with that whole situation. It also involves a couple of other characters. There's a cranky old man character that pops in at some point, as well as there is a blind character, so there is some blind rep in here as well. But it mostly just follows Ansi and the Schwa and their friendship and their process of just living life as middle grade aged kids. As usual with my book reviews, I'm gonna go through my pros, go through my cons, give you my rating, and be done. Actually, first up, I'm going to talk about a neutral that I had. The kids in this book are very insensitive. You can tell that they're in between the stage where they just spout out all the offensive things that their parents say and being a lot more mature and more respectful of other people. So you can tell that there is a slow shift in the book between them being offensive and them re being respectful. So just know that <laughs> going in. It's called out, so it's not portrayed as being a good thing. They are called out when they say offensive things, but it's there. <laughs> My first pro for this book is just kind of how they handled that. As I said, and want to say one more time, is that it's not portrayed as a good thing. These insensitive comments are called out and they say the correct thing afterwards. It reflected realistically how some kids are raised. Some parents just don't know something's offensive or they do know something's offensive and say it anyway and the kids pick up on that and say it. So I think it was realistic in that respect, but then as the novel grows, they become a lot more respectful, as I said. They learn the terms and the proper way to talk about different people with different disabilities and everything like that. So I think just first off, that was done accurately and well. Just to roll off of that, I really love the messages of this novel. This kid is practically invisible and no one really knows who he is and no one really cares to either. It definitely explores how awful it can feel to be left behind or to be left out and how devastating it can be over time. Humans are social creatures so they want to feel like someone cares, they want to be important, they want to matter. I think that this book does a good job of showing how children feel when they f don't feel like there's someone that cares about them or they feel that someone isn't noticing them. But it does it in a way that's more like mystical and magical which, which is a little bit more fun than someone just being really down and feeling terrible they do it in a, a clever way because he's invisible-ish. I actually had someone in my life tell me that I was easily forgettable and I immediately told them that that is probably the worst insult I've ever heard in my entire life. <laughs> so yeah, it's not fun to be invisible-ish. There's other things that are also involved, like it calls into question Ansi's integrity at some point, and there's just other things that are in this, but that main message was one that I really enjoyed. I really liked the blind rep that was in this. You get a couple of touches on how you should communicate with 
a blind person and, and how you should interact with them on a daily basis. If they ask for help, then you give it to them, but don't just assume and don't go up to someone that's blind and touch them because you wouldn't want someone going up to you and touching you. So you should say that you're there and offer your help if you want to. It also kind of talks about how you should describe something to a blind person. It doesn't really help them all that much if you use colors. Like describing this book as yellow and green doesn't really help you that much if you can't see color and if you can't see the book itself. There's also a blind school in here, so I definitely enjoyed some of those small elements that are included. It's not a huge thing that's discussed, but I definitely appreciated it. I'm a huge dog lover, <laughs> so I really loved that there is a lot of dog walking in this and there's all these dogs that the old man has and I really liked seeing all of them even though they're not that important in the story I thought that they did a good job of showing that people have to deal with these different things all the dogs have very interesting names I don't want to spoil it for you but it shows that people have to walk with these things and have to take care of these things and deal with them even though they may not want to I think that that was a good way to include that in there sometimes it can feel like these different things are pulling you along in life and you just feel overwhelmed, but over time you can get a handle on it. So that was a very easy message to pick up on, but I enjoyed it. They're all Afghan hounds, which I just thought was hilarious because my mother actually says that my mom's sister, if, if she were any dog or any animal, she would be an Afghan dog. So that was funny that that popped up in there just on a personal note i also liked that none of the characters are perfect they all have their flaws they all make mistakes they all have to learn from those mistakes and i like that they do learn from their mistakes it's not like they just continuously make them over and over again so the schwa even though he's kind of the underdog of this story he's not perfect he makes mistakes and Auntie makes mistakes and this girl named lexi makes mistakes and the old man named crawley makes mistakes his parents his siblings everyone in this story story makes all of these different mistakes and have to deal with the consequences of those mistakes. It just made the book a lot more interesting and a lot more enjoyable because I could get behind and understand why the characters were choosing the things that they were, even if I didn't agree with them. So it just gave a better, full rounded story than having Ancy be perfect besides just kind of being a smart aleck. <laughs> Another pro for me was that there was just some tension and some dread that started to build in the story and that was very unexpected. Neil Shusterman's older work Works. I don't want to say like old because this is just from 2004, tend to be a lot more direct with the messages that they're giving. A lot of the messages in this book are very easy to pick up on, but I wasn't expecting all of this tension and dread to start building inside of me and for me to get really nervous for the characters. There's a point in this book that I was sitting at the edge of my seat and I was like, no, no, no. And I wasn't expecting a book that's only 200 and I don't know, 10 pages, 15 pages to make me have that kind of reaction. So I ended up actually really enjoying that because I wasn't expecting this book to bring out all of these different emotions in me as I was reading and it somehow managed to do that. So I really enjoyed the characters and the messages and really the plot and what was addressed in this book. Now I'm gonna talk about just one small con that I had. That one con is that I don't really know how I feel about the ending of this book. If you've read it, you'll know what I'm talking about. The way that it ends, it's one of those things that I could see this happening in real life. It could be very realistic, but knowing everything that the characters go through, I don't know if that's how I would have pictured it going. So that's made me feel very conflicted about the ending of this book, if that makes sense. Probably doesn't at all if you have not read this yet. But I also don't think that the books that come after this one address Calvin Schwa at all. So that's the ending of that. I wish it had been different, but that's not really up for me to decide, so that's a very personal con. You may absolutely love this. So overall, I really enjoyed The Schwa Was Here. I thought it had a lot of good messages that are very easy to pick up on. This is actually a very fantastic middle grade book that I think is pretty important for children to read, especially in those middle grade years when children can be absolutely cruel to one another. It just makes you stop and realize how much an effect you can have from just stopping and saying hi to someone that doesn't have as many friends as you do, or just acknowledging someone's accomplishments can make their day. So yes, definitely really enjoyed it. I ended up giving this book four stars. So that's going to be my review on The Schwa Was Here by Neil Shusterman. If you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up and comment down below if you've read this book. Have you read the sequels in this series? Do they remain just as good as this first one was? Anything else you want me to know, leave it down below and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.